Y to the is you, M to the Izzy, the story surgeon's back. I hope that y'all missed me. I believe that anime offers the highest level of storytelling to date. Most of the time, anime have a different feel to them that goes past the art or animation. I can even tell when western stories feel like an anime. But those differences between eastern and western storytelling are hard to pinpoint. In this video, I'll be responding to Western vs. Eastern Storytelling by Literature Devil. This is an interesting topic that I've thought about on multiple occasions, but I want to break down what I think he got right or wrong. Since I don't watch kung fu movies or J-horror from the eastern side, I will only be referring to anime when I say eastern. His first point is that the east has a focus on Nakama while the west doesn't. This is true in his first comparison of Journey to the West and the Odyssey, but it's not true across the board. He argues that in a team of Nakama, each member plays a unique role. He uses DBZ Goblin Slayer and Bebop as examples from the East. First, I'll take on his evidence. The problem here is that he gives multiple Eastern examples, but only one Western example. I could easily bring up comics like The Justice League, Avengers, X-Men, or Fantastic Four to show major examples of Nakama in the West. He only provides enough evidence to support his argument rather than all the evidence that he possibly can. He gives counterexamples later, which could be to subvert our expectations. But the fact that he justifies this with Journey vs. Odyssey implies that he actually believes that this is a valid difference. Moving on, by showing the flaw in his evidence, it destroys his argument. The East may have a special word for it, but the West does it too, and probably just as much. I can name several Westerns that focus on family-like bonds and have each member of the team being important, and I can name the opposite for anime. Look at AOT and the Survey Corps. There are several disposable members, and most of the characters have the same skill sets. The same goes for the armies and kingdom. Usually only the generals stand out, while the rest are disposable. His next point is villains joining the heroes. He uses DBZ and Yu Yu Hakusho as examples and explains this by connecting it to Journey to the West. Then for a western example, he uses the Odyssey. Once again, he makes an argument and backs it up with evidence, but then after this section, he disproves both of these points, so I'm not sure what the goal was here. So far, neither Nakamas or villains becoming heroes are unique to or more commonly found on either side. His next argument compares the anime and Netflix versions of Death Note to conclude that the portrayal of intelligent characters is different between cultures. His argument is that Light Turner is an awkward nerd, which is the primary way intelligent high schoolers are portrayed in the West, while Light Yagami is a top student, which is one of the multiple ways intelligent high schoolers are portrayed in the East. Then he adds that the popular kids in Easterns are usually top students who have a lot of achievements, while popular kids in Westerns are usually dumb and attractive jocks. I feel like this one example is not enough to actually prove the argument that he made. I don't watch many Westerns that take place in high school, but from what I've seen, I don't disagree with his assessment of popular kids. However, I disagree with the argument that the awkward nerd is the only trope for intelligent characters in the West. For example, Community, a show that takes place in college, has two types of intelligent characters. There's Jeff, who slacks off and gets mediocre grades, but can manipulate people with ease through his words and logic. Then there's Annie, who gets high grades and is attractive. Both are intelligent, but neither are awkward or losers. As for my counter to the Eastern argument, Deku is an example of an awkward nerd. And in the same show, Ida is class rep, but no one gives him any special treatment. The student council president in Mob Psycho isn't respected. The student council in Kill a Kill is feared rather than popular. He argues that high intelligence places a western character at the bottom of the social ladder, but an eastern character at the top. But as I've just argued, that's only the case in the small sample size he created. Next, he argues that the different philosophies are at the core of the intelligent social ladder. He argues that the East focuses on spiritual discipline, while the West focuses on physical discipline. His first piece of evidence is from two movies, Ip Man and Fearless, where an Eastern martial artist has to use skill to defeat a physically dominant Western fighter. This example alone is flawed, because the same sentiment is not reciprocated by the West. He doesn't provide an example of a Western story where the Westerner uses strength to beat the Easterner's skill. This can easily be chalked up to the East's biased perception of Western fighters. Then, he argues that Eastern fighters are portrayed as wise gurus, while Western fighters are portrayed as skilled athletes. This actually has some merit, because even samurai were expected to be Zen Buddhists. People like Miyamoto Musashi even wrote books. However, this doesn't mean wisdom is absent from Western heroes. 
He actually shows a picture of Superman. Yes, he's strong, but he's also smart and philosophical in many interpretations. He has to figure out how to navigate a world where he's basically a god. The same goes for Batman. He may be able to do cool physical feats, but he has a strict code and philosophy on crime and justice. Both of these characters don't just fight hard battles. They also make difficult choices, which is a sign of wisdom. Then, Devil tries to tie this back to religion. He uses Buddhism for the East and Catholicism for the West. The first major flaw here is his use of Catholicism. Throughout the video, he's been tying things back to Odyssey vs Journey. If he was arguing that the root of Eastern storytelling is in Journey, which has its roots in Buddhism, I could see where he's coming from. But then for the Western side, he's mixing the Odyssey and Catholicism as roots. But the Odyssey has nothing to do with Catholicism, which would mean that the Western trends don't have a common root, which might mean they're just coincidences. This leads into his argument on conflict. For Westerns, he says, whatever happens, everything is done to come out as the dominant force. For Eastern, he says, there's an overarching problem, but no overarching conflict. He provides more Journey vs Odyssey comparisons, but I've broken that down enough. Anyway, this argument is actually not true. Once again, I can name big counterexamples. To counter the West, the movie Whiplash is about a drummer who simply wants to be the best drummer he can be on the best stage. There's no dominant force here. To counter the West, Kogias has Lelouch aiming to take over the world. He then argues that the West uses Freytag's Pyramid, aka 3-act structure, while the East uses Kisho Tenkets. Again, not true. I have a video dedicated to showing how some of Naruto's arcs follow 3-act structure. I can analyze any anime using 3-act structure. I don't really like Kisho Tenkets, but if I studied it, I'm sure I could analyze Western stories using it. It's all about perspective. I'm going to skip the examples he gives because I already showed the problem in them, but once again, he uses Greek stories as evidence for the West. Next, he says conflict in Kisho Tenkets isn't necessary. This is a lie. Every story requires conflict. Now I'll go back to his example of Kisho Tenkets. A father finds that his family needs more food. That right there is a conflict. There's a problem and it needs to be solved. Then in Kets, the father finds and fights the killer. Once again, that's a conflict. But you know what? I'm gonna take it a step further and analyze this example with three act structure. The introduction is key. The first act break is show. The midpoint is 10. The second act break is the start of Kets. The climax is the killer being defeated. The falling action and resolution is the police arriving. Next, he argues that this lack of conflict in Kisho is why Slice of Life is popular, which is an inaccurate deduction. Slice of Life still has conflicts, it's just that the stakes are extremely low, which is not a requirement of Kisho, as Devil showed in his own example. Then he tackles plots and central conflicts. He says that when a central conflict exists, everything has to revolve around it, which is not true. What's funny is that just by looking at his evidence, you can see how he made that conclusion. The three westerns, which have a central conflict, are movies or plays. They don't have time to loiter around. A movie can't really be episodic. But actually, some Harry Potter movies managed to pull this off since they are book adaptations. Some of them had a subplot based entirely on Quidditch. All of the movies have central conflicts though. His three examples of Easterns, which don't have central conflicts, are TV shows. TV shows are allowed to be episodic. Instead of wasting time and taking easy shots, I'll translate what he's actually trying to say. The difference between these stories are protagonists with a goal versus protagonists with a purpose. A goal is like becoming Pirate King. You can point to a specific scene or point in time where that goal is achieved. A purpose is something that you continue to strive for until you die. Protecting your friends is a purpose. You can't point to a moment in time where a character has finished their purpose. Death Note, which he used as evidence for the East, does have a central conflict. That is Light versus detectives like L or Nier. Then he makes an inaccurate comparison. He removes the Empire from Star Wars and says that the story falls apart. Then he says that if you remove L from Death Note, the story still goes on. There's a problem here. The Empire is the villain, but L is a hero. Villains are proactive, while heroes are reactive. A hero can't serve justice unless there is a problem to be dealt with. Death Note's villain is Light. He's the one creating the problems. So, if we correct Devil's comparison and remove Light from the story, it falls apart, just like Star Wars. Then he uses Goblin Slayer as evidence. As I said before, the story is different because of the protagonist. Goblin Slayer doesn't have a goal, he has a purpose, and that's to kill as many goblins as he can. The central conflict exists, it's Slayer versus Goblins. If you remove all goblins from the story, it falls apart. Then One Punch Man. Saitama has the goal of finding someone who can rival him in battle. But this is a very passive goal because he's not actively looking for someone. He's just hoping that he comes across a foe. 
If you remove that conflict from the story, you could probably still have a story since it's a passive conflict. But if you remove the villains entirely, you'd have no story. Finally, he argues that Westerns focus on external struggles while Easterns focus on internal struggles. This is incorrect and you can look at any of the examples I named above, West or East. They usually have both internal and external struggles. Star Wars, Harry Potter, DBZ, and OPM all have both. He says that there are overlap and exceptions, but those aren't the correct terms to be using here because most of the video doesn't use sufficient evidence to back up his arguments. There is no trend here to begin with to allow for exceptions. Everything here overlaps, making none of these differences valid. And it's not like I'm bringing up rare counterexamples, I'm using big names. It'd be unrealistic to get every story in the world, so let's create an example of a good sample size. If we were to get every single story between a year A and a year B, with an IMDB score of X or higher, I can almost guarantee that all of these trends he tried to argue would be disproved. The sample size would take into account a large span of time and popularity, so it'd be fair. So, are there no differences between Eastern and Western storytelling? No, I believe there are a collection of microscopic trends that when put together, create a major difference. In order to find all of those differences, I'd have to do a lot of research and thinking. As of now, I am unconsciously aware of them, which is why I can say this feels like an anime, but I can't pinpoint all of the reasons why. Example 1. Take my video anime writing techniques that create hype scenes. If I were to write a scene only using one of those techniques, it wouldn't feel anime-like, but if I were to use all of them, the anime quality would be glaring. Example 2. In my video titled Anime Doesn't Work in Live Action, I covered even more differences between the West and East, like character designs, setting, dialogue, and even comedy. Example 3. I've recently noticed that the way anime and westerns handle romance is different. In anime, there is a combination of one romantic interest for a character one eventual relationship with that interest. The characters get together towards the end of the story, the characters never break up, and the characters are never shown, said, or implied to have sex unless it's having kids. Not all anime follow all of these rules, but many of them follow many. My examples would be DBZ, Naruto, Bleach, Fairy Tail, Isekoi, Toradora, Kimi ni Tsudoke, Lovely Complex, Sakura So, and Bunny Girl Senpai. Meanwhile, westerns usually have a mix of multiple romantic interests for a character multiple short relationships, sex in those relationships, and there may not even be a final relationship. My examples are The Office, Community, Parks and Recs, Seinfeld, New Girl, and How I Met Your Mother. Another issue with this video is correlation versus causation. I mentioned this before, but Devil seems hell-bent on connecting Western storytelling differences to Greek and Catholic stories and values, but he doesn't have enough evidence to prove it. For example, I could theorize that the difference in approach to romance between East and West is because Japan is more conservative and family-oriented, while the US is fine with promiscuity and hoe behavior. These are some scary hours. I mean, you got fucking minors making thirst traps on TikTok and shit. Like, what the fuck is that? But as of now, that's just a correlation. I'd have to get a lot of data to prove that. But I don't really care about why there's a difference, just what the difference is. In conclusion, this video suffered from minuscule sample sizes using just enough evidence to support the arguments, and a desire to find a simple answer to a question that doesn't have one. I've tried to do that in the past too, and it didn't work out. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.